Hi viewers, welcome to tonight's episode of Ozfish TV. Tonight I'm heading down to Lang Lang. Been hitting Temby Point the past couple of weeks and I haven't hit Lang Lang in a while. Trying to get a few fish on film. We've been getting a few fish on like bycatch, <laughs> banjos, stingrays, a couple more stingrays, a couple more banjos. But you never know, you always get a good one in the mix and that's what land based fishing is all about. Putting in the hours and uh, persistence pays off, as you'll see. Rightio, well we'll see you down on the water. Where are we, Mark? Lang Lang. Good old Lang Lang. Now, it's around about an hour from the CBD, about 25 minutes from Cranbourne. Going down the South Gippsland Highway, there's a little um, street sign saying Jetty Lane. That's where you want to head down. You head all the way down to the end, and you just fish straight off the beach. Now, target species for tonight. Elephant shark. Elephant shark or elephant fish, whatever you want to call it. Um, not the most desired species out there, but we reckon they're fun to catch, and we also like eating them, so. The reason the elephant shark and the gummy sharks and all that like to come up here, they come up to these mud banks and they feed off all the crabs and whatnot that are cruising around these uh, rocks and things, so that's what they're coming up to eat and hopefully when they're coming up looking for those crabs they'll find out a bit of squid or a bit of pilchard and just nail it and take off. And just on another note, don't be tempted to walk out on the mud and try to cast to the water because <laughs> while it looks okay, it's very soft. Yeah, you sort of go one, two, and you'll sink. The other night when we were down here, he got his line tangled on a post out there. So I said, go out and get it, mate. So he did. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Look at it's like a prehistoric foot. foot. <laughs> yeah, sorry, mate. I've got to tell you about the mud out there. Yeah, it's all right. Oh, got go, to learn one way or another. Go find a tap, mate, and rinse it off. A choice tonight. I've got pilchards and I've got this whole whole squid from Gotcha Bay. They come out, they're quite fresh. And that's my favourite bait of all, the tentacle. Basically, that's all I'm using. I'll just go into the top hook there a couple of times. Leaves plenty of hook exposure. Measure it down about just over halfway, and I'll just go through it a couple of times like that. And basically, that's it. Plenty of hook exposure. Elephant sharks, gummy sharks, they come up, they have a nibble, and then they just go bang. My, uh, I'm using Black Magic C point hooks. I find these C point hooks are very sharp. They've got little chiseled edges right at the tip, which you won't be able to see on camera. But they, um, just, it's heaps better for penetration, so. Somewhere out in the deep blue yonder, mate. Now Mark, my good, good mate, he, uh, he calls this place the Donut Factory. <laughs> and for good reason. We've been down here probably the last 10 times and that's all we've caught, donuts. Little gummies and a couple of stingrays. What's your hook of choice tonight, Mark? 8 o circle. Good hook. Beautiful. My hook of choice for gummies. And for elephant shark, I think we're going to go... Size 6. Uh, 4. 
size form. Four oh. Should do the job, mate. Chris has just gone to uh, gone to get us some poo, and his uh, young son Lockie's got the camera. <laughs> That'd be right. We get a bite as soon as he drives off. It is a gummy. It's a nice little gummy. Okay. Have a look at that, eh? It's a nice little fish. And your daddy missed it. That's alright, we got to see it, didn't we, mate? Yeah. He's probably only just on size, maybe. But they're too small, so we'll let him swim off. And off he goes. Oh. Now I'm just gonna rebate. I have to get a bigger gummy or an elephant. Now that's a big puffer, mate. That is a big puffer, isn't it? Sounds the size of him. <laughs> oh, getting a bit of a nibble, mate. Nothing too big. You get a lot of uh, big mullet and whitey around here. Oh, yeah, you can see that. A little, uh, yeah. I'll just leave it out there a bit longer. When you get little nibbles and that, don't just think, oh, he's taking me bait and bring it in. Leave it out there for a good five or ten minutes because you never know. Little peckers just peck away at it and the big fish comes along and just goes bang. Probably, probably wrapped up. Got on there, buddy. Yeah, that hit pretty hard, didn't it? Yeah. Elephant. Yeah, it's an elephant shark, mate. Elephant. Well done. Get him in nice and close. Scotty, do you want to? Yep. Beautiful. They, they wrap themselves up pretty good. There's a spine on top. It's got yep. a little bit of venom in it. So just okay. Careful. No worries. It's not going to kill you, but probably not going to make me very comfy either, is it? No, yeah, just grab him. Grab him. Oh, so is that all, all you got to be worried about? Just a spike on the back? Yeah, mate. They just got a little spike on there. What was that caught on, mate? The snapper snatcher. Yes, mate. And squid. I had squid on both. Is this a normal size uh, elephant, Mickey? Yes, mate. That is uh, the very common size for elephant sharks caught down here at Lang Lang or okay. anywhere else in Western Port Bay. Um, generally, the bigger ones are the females and the smaller ones, they look like little rats, they're the males. The yep. females are the ones you want to keep to eat. Alright, mate. I'm going to put this guy back. Yep. I won't give him a kiss because of that spike. They have a beautiful little fight in them, haven't they? They do, they fight very well, mate. They're uh, yeah. very similar to a gummy shark. A lot of people like, don't like eating elephant sharks. They're actually really nice to eat if you get the fillets and you soak them in water and vinegar overnight. Just a little hint, just try it one day and see what you think. So, just caught it on a bit of squid, but yeah, they definitely bite. Like, the, the rod was really bucking. Let's see if we can get some more. Now, I've got to rebate. Nice work, mate. Cheers, buddy. Bait of choice tonight is my uh, whole gotcha squid. Don't drop it, Jack. You'll see me use this bait a lot because I love ripping these big tentacles off the whole squid. Done me well time and time again on gummies, snapper, and even elephant sharks. I like to call them elephant sharks, even though they're meant to be a fish. They've got the same body structure as a shark. That should do the job. Now we're just going to wait for a fish with a trunk. As you can see, look down the beach, there's just people everywhere. It's a beautiful night. It's very accessible to every average angler out there, bring the kids down, it's a great place. Kids splashing in the water. People with rods set up all the way down the beach. I reckon there's probably 50 or 60 rods set up from here to there. Now all we need is a fish. Hi viewers, welcome to this week's tip. For today's tip, we're going to talk about elephant sharks. Elephant sharks migrate from pretty deep water to come into the shallows and breed. They do this during late summer and early spring, and they tend to come in, lay their eggs in the mud flats, and that's where they find their food for the period before they go back out. This means your bait needs to be around those mud flats and as close to the bottom as possible. That's what those noses are for, for sifting at crustaceans. These pilchard, squid, pretty much anything that resembles the crustacean, and I've heard they love pippies too. So, 
give it a shot with a big variety of baits because they're greedy scavengers and you're sure to catch a few of the fish around those mud banks. Bloody grandma, right the cheeky bugger. Lucky because there was a boat coming. It's the other thing too, when you're, uh, if you're fishing your boat ramps and piers and you see boats coming, bring your line in because then they'll just cut your line and then you just get all annoyed and then people start arguing. There's no, no need for it. Doesn't hurt just to bring your line in for a minute. Gives you a chance to check your bait anyway. Mark. How are you? Good, buddy. See ya. That's the way, mate. Uh, pretty, good, pretty good. How'd you go locking up the shop, alright? Excellent. All good. Thanks for that, mate. Alright. My line's just gone in the water. Jesse's setting up. Safe marker spot because when, usually when you come down here in elephant season, there's just people lined up everywhere. So we've saved him a spot. Alright. Bait's over there. No worries. Nice little biscuit here, mate. What do we got here? Biscuits with olives, pesto. Mm, beautiful. And cheese. Now, wait a second. Looks like a bit of a posh snack for me. <laughs> Aren't I the one from Mornington? Supposed to be eating caviar? Yeah, no, I know. I stole it out of your, stole it out of your boot. <laughs> it was sitting next to your caviar, actually. Yeah, yeah that'd be right. How good's this, Ricky? Beautiful, mate. Having a great night. Watching the sunset go down. We've uh, done all right on the fishing. Yeah. Kids are having a good time. What could be better? How you going, mate? Good. You had a hit earlier? Yeah, had a little hit on Pilchard, but didn't get a hookup. So waiting still. Got about another hour before the tide goes too far out, so hopefully something. Uh, you and I have been fishing here for many years, haven't we? Yes, yes. It's a hit and miss spot, but you, uh, you get a few from time to time. I um, usually put about a 50-50 strike rate on this, but you tend to call it the donut factory. <laughs> Yes, yes, you can go quite a while without getting one, but then when you do, you're very happy. Always worthwhile putting a bait rod in. Tends to be quite a few little fish around here. And this one looks like a little mullet. The most common catch here is the yellow eyed mullet. Sorry people at home, I've got the car running because it's cold <laughs> and you can barely hear anything. That's around the perfect size you want if you're the kind of guy that likes using mullet for shark. And bigger species like that. Bait like this, two fillets, cut them fillets in half, you've got four baits, catch ten of these and you're set for a couple of weeks. So, so I've got to ask you, Jesse, is that what you're going to use it for or are you just having a bit of fun? I don't know. I actually don't mind mullet to eat, really. Okay. So if I catch a few of them, I might put them in some breadcrumbs and do it the old Hummelhoff way. <laughs> <laughs> no bag limit on mullet? 40. 40 fish. Size person. limit? No size limit, so great for the kids, great for the family. You don't have to worry about getting the bigger ones. Just get a feed out of whatever you can catch. Only take what you need, don't that, take too much. That's a good thing down about it, Lang Lang. You can put the big rods out, you can always put that little rod out because there's quite a lot of these there's guys. There's always little, these little guys around here. When you're catching mullet quite often at night time, you know it's a good mullet spot because a lot of guys say they're more of a day fish, but I completely disagree with that and I've just proven it. Good on you, mate. I've taken Mark's line, sorry mate. I don't even know what it is. I dare say elephant or gummy by the way it was picking. Power wrap, so I'm pretty sure I can bring it in. I've got lines absolutely everywhere. Unfortunately, when you're fishing with a few rods close together, this is gonna happen. Hi guys, welcome to Pack and Tackle Chat. Today I'm on site. Bit of work research. 
this is something that you should all get into practice of with your drags. When you're land-based fishing, you always have your drags loose so fish doesn't take it into the water. Uh, when you're out and you get the fish and you tighten it right up, a lot of people tighten up their drags way too much and they leave them tight. Now the worst thing you can do for a reel is leave your drag tight because what it does is it compresses all the washes and you don't get the life of your reel. So when you get home, when you clean your reel off, loosen the drag off and it will keep it going a lot longer. Cheers guys and I'll see you next time. I've got lines absolutely everywhere. Unfortunately, when you're fishing with a few rods close together, this is gonna happen. I've never actually seen this bad. Who's running double stale red hooks? There's hooks flying all around everywhere, so I've got to be careful. That's two Romix rigs we've just had to cut right up. So I'm going to measure him anyway, not that I'm going to keep him. Just out of my own curiosity. Alright, that was over 50. There was a lot of line wrapped around him. We had to clean him up for you. Now I could keep him, but he's a little bit small and he's very skinny, not a lot of meat. So I'm gonna let him go. I oh, saw a hit on me rod. I said I'll give it five minutes because I reckon he'll come back. And sure enough, he did. Unfortunately, he's taken out two lines and we've had to cut and retie. So I've got to get him back in the water quick because I want to get my line re-rigged to get it back out there. All right, back in there. Let the oxygen get into his gills. He'll find his way. I hope. There we go. And off he goes looking for more crabs to eat. <laughs> oh, yeah, there we go. Bit more of a fight. I don't think he's overly huge. It's an elephant. Well, you got a fish on your cheap Jarvis Walker rod. Ah, he got me too. Got to watch that spine. He bloody got me. They've got a little bit of venom in them. Um, not a great deal. If you get a really good spike, they can do some damage. It's quite sharp. He gave me a little prick. They got a little venom, a little bit of venom in them, but nothing, nothing too major. He's only a little guy. I reckon he deserves to go back. I really, I really do like, I do enjoy him, but uh, he can go back. Up he goes. It was definitely hitting. Yeah. Oh, he's still there. Got him. Oh yeah. I saw it bouncing. Yeah, he swam right up towards me. The line was really slack, so I had a circle hook on. I figured he just hooked himself and swam towards the shore. So I kind of got to get the line on them quickly before they spit it out. He swam right up to the shore, actually. Right Here he comes. Drag him up the beach, mate. <laughs> that's, Decent that's gummy. That's a nice fish, buddy. Oh, jeez. I actually said to you when we got down here. Now that's a circle hook, yes? Circle hook, yep. Black Magic KL circle hook. They do the damage for us, don't they? Oh, they definitely do. That line was completely slack and he still stayed on. Oh, that's I think a... you're swimming towards you, mate. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> I mean, quite often if you've got a bait holder or just your single hooks, they swim towards you. If you're not quick enough, they're gone, but the circles tend to give you that 30 more seconds to get to your rod before it's spat out, so... That's why I like them. Because gummies do love swimming towards the rod after they take a bait. <laughs> you keep that in a fit. That's not a three kilo. Though. And I've got the scales to find out. Three so, kilos. I told you it'd be three kilos. Exactly on it. 2.93 kilos. I said it's a three kilo gummy. Circle hook's done the damage. And as I often do, I'll catch my one gummy every two to three weeks. So I'll keep it. Anything I can catch between then goes back. Well, if you've got something in the fridge, there's no need to keep it. No it? need to keep any more. But we're out of flake and I'm a bit of a fan of it. So <laughs> Aren't we all, mate? Make sure if you're going to keep them, you can humanely put them to sleep. 
before you feed them, gut them, all the rest. Just make sure you take care of your fish, otherwise well, they just don't come out as well in the pan. It's about a 50-50% strike rate I have down here, so well, that was good. Okay, that concludes Lang Lang. I hope you enjoyed the show. It's been a good couple of weeks. We've been down here battling the elements. It's been some really good days, hasn't it, mate? There has been some good days. And there's been some really, really bad nights, like tonight. It's freezing and the wind is howling. But tonight was our most productive night. Tonight was very good. We got a couple of little gummies and um, a nice elephant. We kept one gummy and threw the other two back. But we toughed it out, didn't we, guys? I have been freezing my hair off. <laughs> but I'm yeah. just happy that we got home with a fish. Well, you got a nice fish tonight, mate. I've got a little gummy and an elephant. i got donuts. Yeah, yeah, not tonight, though. You usually do better than me down here. I do, but tonight, donuts. That's it. And uh, we know it's a bit of mess around here, guys. If you're coming down to Lang Lang, clean up your mess. There's bins around. If you uh, really want to go for a fish, you've got to get out in these elements sometimes. Well, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Oz Fish TV. We've got a, a great shot sent in by Adrian Lietier. What Adrian has caught is a Wobbegong shark. I've never seen one, but it looks pretty impressive. Have a look at that. Um, it's got massive teeth. Hopefully we can show you two photos of that as well. He caught that on mullet um, off the rocks in Walkerville. So well done. And you've won yourself a signed copy. Yeah, you're getting a signed one apparently of the Ozfish TV season one. So we'll be putting that in the mail for you. So that was this week's winner for the Brag Wall. If you would like your chance to get your catch put on the Brag Wall, please send it to ozfishtv.com or straight to our Facebook page and you'll get a chance to win that wonderful DVD as well. Okay viewers, you can find us on Facebook under Ozfish TV. Myself with the Ozfish team, I've also bought out another page called Bring Back Lang Lang Pier. It's for a great cause. We're really trying to get as much support as we can to get this pier rebuilt. It was taken down seven years ago with a promise to be rebuilt and it never was. So get on the page guys, like it, um, share your thoughts and we're going to really try and push to get this thing built. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Ozfish TV.